Welcome back to Instruments of Destruction, the game where you build massively destructive and satisfying vehicles. And uh, today, we're going to be trying to build a slingshot because unlike a lot of other games I play, this game actually has stretchy, flexible cables and rope. But of course, it's not enough just to build a, a slingshot that, what, launches like a measly wrecking ball or steel orb or something. Uh, no, we're gonna be launching explosive bombs as opposed to those unexplosive bombs. So yeah, the idea is to use some type of stretchy rope or bungee and uh, see if we can actually pull back this bomb, release it, and have it fly towards a building and successfully hit and damage it. You know, I really should just start saving one of these base template vehicles because I always start just doing the same thing. We just need a nice heavy base to start with and then we can build the idea off of that. Most of my ideas are based on building something off of a heavy base. So I think I'm gonna save this one as like just a template default vehicle. This looks pretty much perfect. And I even gave myself some attachment blocks so we can just attach this thing to the ground and not have to worry about it flopping all over the place when we try to fire a slingshot. All right, so now I'm building the actual slingshot part. And I think the tough part about this is gonna be to figure out a good system for pulling and releasing. I don't know how much tension we're gonna be able to put. It's gonna really depend on what type of rope we choose. Now, I'm probably gonna wanna make it a little bit wider. The wider the slingshot is, the more tension I'm gonna be able to place on the rope, I think. All right, now we need to uh, build out to where the bomb is going to be. We attach this bomb to this release connector, so we're gonna have to time that release. Uh, we can set a release of delay time, though. Obviously, these beams are gonna be replaced with bungee. All right, so I gotta make sure that this is gonna stay stable as well as we launch. So just attaching the bungee or the cords to the uh, center, it's going to be likely to flip and not have the bomb go out straight. So I'm going to try first with a heavy cable. There's probably going to be some experimentation on which is going to be the best one to use for that ultimate stretchability. Um, but I'm going to split the heavy cable, one going to the top and one going to the bottom of this. And I'm hoping that that's going to be more likely to keep it uh, level as it springs back. Because if I attach it right to the center, I'm afraid that uh, it's not going to keep the bomb in the front. The bomb's going to end up like flipping around and not going out straight. All right, so now, uh, well, let's actually spawn this in and see how flexible that feels. Oh, that that looks pretty good. Here, let me test the, uh, What we have rope settings as well. We have all kinds of rope settings here. Let's definitely bump the strength up, the attached strength, which I'm assuming is going to make me be able to pull it back more and provide more tension before it actually snaps. We also have a tension setting that we can play around with as well. But at first, I gotta figure out how I'm even gonna pull this back. All right, here we go. So it's really cool with these pistons, I can actually change the starting position. So it doesn't actually have to start in the contracted position. I can extend it out and pretty much make it go exactly where I need it to go. Uh, here, let's go all the way out and then just move this, nudge this until it attaches just like that. Now it is all attached and oh, Oh yeah, that actually, this is actually lengthening the rope. So that doesn't actually count. We want the rope to be uh, fully contracted to start off with, and then we gotta pull it back. All right, so now I'll just use some flex beam to attach this point down to the base here. And now I should at least be able to pull it back. I don't know how optimized this is going to be. Oh, this isn't attached with a, con a release connector yet, but there we go. Yeah, I cannot release it right now, unfortunately. And this does not feel like a lot of tension yet. That's why this is definitely going to be some trial and error. All right, let's put a release connector at the end of these pistons before we attach it, because that way we can actually let go of the projectile here. All right, I think we're ready for the first test. We go ahead and pull back. Now let's see how much, uh, how much springiness this rope actually has. And release! <laughs> that's... That's something. It's not nothing. That's, we're on the right track. Uh, let me do another test here. I, I just gotta see, you know, I can slow it down. Let's go ahead and, I should probably also attach myself to the ground. All right, let's slow it down to 30%. All right, 30% speed isn't a good idea. All right, let's go 60% speed, maybe. Can the ropes handle this? All right, good, and release. All right, you know, oh no. It's a good thing there isn't uh, friendly fire or any damage to vehicles in this game at, at all because that would have been catastrophic. Um, but I think we need to go way further back. We really, really need to push this thing as far as it can go. And by push this thing, I mean pull this thing. 
as far as it can go. All right, man, flex beams are the most useful thing. You just click on one point, click on another point, instant rigid attachment, super convenient. I love flex beams. Oh no. Oh boy, all right, definitely got to uh, attach myself to the ground. Let's put it back on full speed. All right, let's see. Uh, we're definitely gonna break the rope now. Oh my goodness, we just, all right, well, let's let go and see what happens. You know what? That's not a lot of tension. Um, I don't think the rope is a good... I don't think a rope is a good one. Uh, let's go with bungee. Bungee sounds like a slingshot kind of material to me. But let's just try its default settings other than strength right now and see how this feels compared to the rope. Ooh. Let go. Whoa! That felt the most legit so far. Okay, I definitely got to adjust the timing of the release, but before we do that, let me mess around with other settings. Let's do maximum tension. See how that feels in relation. Okay, ready, release. Honestly, I have no idea if that was better or worse. Let me see what happens if I have no delay time on the release. Is this just going to explode the bomb as soon as I release it? Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so that's with maximum tension. Let's do one more test. Oh, I just realized I can't aim this. I know how to aim it. I, I can modify all of this to make it be able to aim up and down. But before we get there, uh, let's do another test. Let's just test tension, pure tension test. All right, that lands pretty much right at the base of the building. And that was on tension three. Let's go back to tension one and see if that's better or worse. I would assume it would be worse with less tension as far as the distance goes, but only one way to find out and release. Honestly, seems pretty much the same. All right, yeah, it's, it's about the same, um, but let's change smoothness up. I don't know what smoothness is. Smoothness, is that like dampening on suspension, you know? Uh, there we go. Not seeing a whole lot of differences. I'm just going to add three ropes to this and uh, see what happens. All right, maximum stability, maximum tension, maximum strength. Let's see how this feels now. All right, release. Whoa! Guys, this is already pretty much successful. This is crazy. I just pretty much have to add controllability to this thing and we're gonna have an awesome slingshot. Let's put stability way up and just see what it does. All right, here's maximum stability now. It seems exactly the same. All of these settings don't really seem to make a difference with uh, whatever purpose that we're using the rope for. Okay, so now that this is extremely successful, um, let's give ourselves the ability to aim this thing. So rather than attach to the base down there, uh, I'm going to need to use the flex beam to attach it back to the slingshot itself like that. All right, just make sure everything still works. Why does it seem like I can't pull it back as much? No, oh, yeah, it seems like a little bit less that time. All right, you know what? I think I need to make an attachment point down here. All right, there we go. I feel like that's gonna be more out of the way and be less likely to interfere with, um, with these pistons pulling back. Huh, the piston strength seems not as good as it was, but it's still doing great. Still doing great. All right, now to make this thing be able to aim up and down. Oh, I could put a laser sight. There we go. Look at that. Now we got a laser sight on this thing, which um, isn't really that... I should put it on the bottom, actually, but it's not going to be that useful until, uh, until I can actually aim up and down. All right, so now it's going to be pretty easy to aim up and down. Uh, I'm just going to put a power arm... Yeah, power arm, I think, has more torque than the power pivot. Just put that right here. Oh, boy, I definitely got to adjust the strength of that. But now, as you can see, there we go. I'll put the aimer on. We can definitely aim ourselves up and down. I should probably also allow it to swivel like a turret because if I'm going to be planting myself in the ground. I can't actually use my tracks to aim very well. But let's see how accurate it is right now, even though I'm not aimed left or right. Pull back. And release. I mean, we, de we definitely got gravity. Gravity is not on our side right now. <laughs> okay, so I've added a power swivel down here and I've uh, moved the power pivot up to the base of the slingshot. So now we should have full control. Let me go ahead and plant. I also added the wheelie bar because sometimes when I spawned in, I fell backwards. But now we should, as you can see, we can aim left and right. Let me turn our laser on and 
we can now aim up and down just like that. And oh boy, the left and right is terrible. Like look, I go right and now I'm not pressing anything. It has such a swivel to it. It's not stable at all. I think I have a fancy way to get around that. We're gonna do some, we're gonna do some slightly more advanced engineering, but let's just see, let's just see how well this thing seems to be aiming right now as it swivels. See, it takes way too long. It takes way too long to settle down. All right, I think uh, number two is now the launch button. There we go. Hey, whoa, whoa. So I turned tough structures off and that seemed to make a big difference. That was amazing. All right, you ready for some more fancy engineering? Instead of using this thing to turn, I'm actually going to replace that now with a free swivel. So this is gonna be completely free swiveling. There's no power to that whatsoever. And instead, I'm going to use pistons to uh, turn this thing. So I'm gonna have some 90 degree elbows here. And then I need to attach another free swivel. And then I will have from that another 90 degree extending out in this direction. And actually, I think this is gonna have to go up a little bit farther. All right, so now I will attach pistons to this. And these pistons, I'm gonna have their uh, starting position be halfway in between. So between zero and six would be three. So that way they can either expand or contract in either direction. And I'm gonna have to um, disable mirror and reverse one of these. So they're gonna go opposite of each other. When one expands, the other contracts. And this should allow us to use piston strength to rotate this thing, which I think is gonna prevent it from um, wobbling as when we let go of the input. All right, so now we need another 90 degree angle here. And then that's not a convenient spot to attach to, but with the power of flex beam, we can attach anywhere we want. And whoops, I totally forgot to have symmetry mode on. All right, so now uh, what are we gonna, gonna control this with? E and Q. Let's see if I have it going in the right direction or if this even works as intended at all. All right. Okay, they are- oh no. I think I gotta widen them a little bit. Okay, hold on. Gotta change the tune strength of these way down too, so they don't go as fast. All right, so now my issue was that they're a little bit too close, so let's just widen it a little bit, just like that. All right, let's see if this works now. Aim to the left. There, oh, let me attach myself to the ground. There we go. Oh, there's a little bit of bouncing once you get to the end, but... Oh man, they do still bounce. I'm surprised at that, but it's not nearly as much as the other one was. You can see it definitely just has a little bit, a little bit of sway, but not that huge back and forth sway. So it is more stable, but I'm really surprised at, um, at how difficult it is to get something to just be really stable. All right, and we only have like about 45 degrees. I'm going to move them even wider, but I'm going to double up the amount of pistons. Okay, let's see how this feels. Aim over to the right. All right, we can aim to that building. I mean, they still wobble. I don't think it's as extreme as it was with the power uh, swivel. This definitely feels like it zeroes in a little bit better. Now let's see how the aim is. Pull back. Uh, I think I had a release. Number two, release. <laughs> I mean, we can reach the building. But well, of course, gravity takes over. Oh, I didn't even think, oh, I can still aim up and down. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, good. Let's try to hit the top of that building. I almost forgot that I programmed this thing to be able to aim up and down. Let's turn on our laser. There we go. Now we can aim up. I'm gonna aim over the top of the building because you know, we got gravity on our side. Pull it back and shoot. Oh. It works. It works so well. Man, if only I could re- I don't know how I could possibly create a reloading slingshot. Like, I really- I really don't think that that would be a, a task that I can figure out right now. All lined up and release. Oh, there we go. Yes! Man, I really wish I could- what is going on? Alright, just stop, 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 stop. Man, I really wish I could do more. Maybe I can do more. Maybe I can make the projectile a little bit bigger. Are these gonna blow up because they're colliding with each other? Yeah, that's, uh, that's how that works. All right, can't just put a bunch of bombs in each other, apparently. All right, what if they're like that? Is that too close? Okay, don't know what to think about this. Can it launch without exploding? Oh. 
The building's gone. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. Okay, now I want to go for the small building. See if we can make that thing disappear. Aiming way up on this one. And release. Oh, look at it go. Oh. Those are so strong in numbers. It's a lot heavier, so I got to aim way up. I was just short of it, but the building's still gone, so it's something. All right, let's go for this one. This is a small but still large building. Not quite as far away, though. And launch. Oh, it's so slow now, but that was a perfect shot right on the top of the building. Probably right into the side would be even better. Let's compare that. All right, here we go. My laser sight's aimed right over the top, so let's go ahead and release. The spinning was kind of epic. Man, look at the hole. It definitely, it worked better landing right on top of the building, actually. That wasn't quite as good. All right, and then uh, my last target, I'm gonna go with this one. I'm just gonna try to hit it right in the center and just divide the top and the bottom of the building from each other. Maybe I feel like a little bit up is actually. I'm gonna aim at the top of the building and maybe I'll hit center with gravity. All right, here we go. Yeah. Oh, that was perfect. That was exactly what I wanted to do. Divide the top and the bottom, and then the top fell back onto the bottom. Okay, one last shot from a different perspective. I want to do it from the building perspective, because that's always fun. Let's aim at the top of the boot. Wait, what happened? That, that had never happened before. No, what's that? Stop it. Stop with the oscillations. No. We're going to watch it from the building side this time. We ready? And three, two, one, launch. Oh, there it goes. The whole middle of a building just disintegrates. Oh, that is so great. And then, of course, my vehicle freaks out every single time after I launch. Well, I gotta admit, this was a lot easier to do than I thought it was going to. And I love it when it spins like that. I don't know what makes it do that versus other times when it doesn't, but it looks so much more epic when it does. And release. <laughs> I love how it spins. It's so good. This thing's pretty consistent, too. Yeah, man, the introduction of uh, bungees and ropes and stuff, that is that, that really makes this game unique when it comes to building structures like this. I don't think I've ever had an easier time building a slingshot style creation that works this consistently. So big props to Instruments of Destruction for that. Are there any other crazy contraptions or ideas you'd like to see in this game? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrabman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.